from Atlanta, where even driving makes my face ache. It's the Nine Billion Names of Pod with Dan Bauman and Michael Reed. I'm Dan Bauman. I'm Ralph Halfshat's boss, and uh, he's not getting a promotion. Not in a year or two. Not ever. So, let's talk about some stuff. Uh, nope, I can't do that. I need to step up the reactor power and put three more Doritos. So, uh, let's go ahead and play part two. What I've noticed, because I've seen it in like four different cities. I've yeah. seen it in New Jersey and ah, Georgia. Regional there callbacks. Are regional callbacks. There are standard Rocky lines, but there are absolutely regional, like made up lines. And it's funny how, like, the lines, the Rocky lines, they're there because. Well, asshole, slut. And if and there's probably a good, I'd say, oh, 40 or 50 ones that are pretty much universal. But then there's the variations. Right. And, we had ours in Queens, in yeah. New York. We had definitely our own yeah. thing. And, hey, I came up with a Ronald Ray gun, yeah. and it got one laugh. And that laugh was about 20 minutes ago, and it was from <laughs> yes, you. That's right. But you know what? I would use, I'd say that line every production, every yep. time we did a show. Because you know what? Fuck it. I came up with it. I liked it. I'm saying it. Yeah. Uh, it went over uh, um, slightly less well than you know any of the other lines people came up with you know we had from some time good ones we had some good ones but my, my my favorite was uh you know when rocky looks up holding frank after after frank gets killed uh we can, we come up with you killed ted you medieval dickweed <laughs> yep we had one that i think only got said once and it was literally just to make me laugh uh, I was playing Riff Raff. Yeah. Uh, my friend Sue was playing was playing Magenta. My friend Mike was playing Brad, and my friend Maggie was playing Janet. And at the dinner scene, uh, Mike just uh, Mike and Maggie look up at me and and, just, and go, uh, uh, "Eddie's just this guy, you know," which is a line out of Hitchhiker's Guide, which <laughs> they knew would get me, and it just laid me out. But. Uh, much, much like Eddie, much like Eddie, yes. Sure. Um, but the uh, the other production I did. Uh, two, three summers ago was weird because that crowd was not a Rocky Horror crowd. Nope. And the lines, like, some worked and some didn't and some people did and it was real wobbly because people would try to do it and it just didn't See, that's the thing. If you're at a stage show and you try to do that, Man, nothing is worth stepping on the actor's lines. Yeah. I mean, you know, I did some of the callbacks at the onstage show. I did a lot of callbacks because I was younger and stupider and, you know, didn't give a shit at the San Diego rep. But when uh, Actors Express did it, nope, yeah. I did not it one single line. It just didn't work. Very rarely did it work. Like yeah. where... Uh, Courtney was able to nail a couple when she because she's came and saw it a bunch of times. And yeah, yeah uh, well, yeah. That, see, that's the thing. If you see the stage show that production five, six, seven times, by your third time, you're like, all right, I know how this is paced, how they're phrasing. I know where I can slip yeah, something in exactly. But I only went once, and I was like, nope, I am not going to step on Randy. I am not going to step on Stephanie. I'm not going to step on anybody. Uh, yep. So I saw know. Dad's Garage actually did it. Did they years. really? They did, yes. And like, I, like the straight version, not any change up, or they did. They did change it up a bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I and you know, forgive me, my friends, but I didn't care for it. It <laughs> like we had done it, it. We'd only done it like a year or two before. Okay. okay. Uh, they and I tried calling out lines, and again, just didn't work. Yeah. The, the way they did it was kind of weird. And it well, when you issues. go to see a stage production, you got to read the room. I mean, I saw yeah. I saw it on Broadway with Dick Cavett and um, Joan Jett. Yeah. No way did I do a call out. Right. No. And nobody else did either. It was like you read the room, you read that production and go, this is not a call out production. Right. This is a shut your mouth and enjoy the show production. Our our poster and on stage had audience participation welcome. Good. So, and, and that's good because and they gave a, out the bags with the with the toilet paper and nice. the Nice. I, I remember and, that. Yeah. I remember that. So So if if the theater actually says do it, then, you know, don't dream it, do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh continuing on. Hey, um when you're undressing Brad and um he talks about playing out the aces when the time is right, 
and then there are aces that come out of his pants. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Exactly. I mean, I kind of chuckled, but I is it what was that joke in service of? Yeah. Was that because in the in the audience participation, yes, playing cards are used, but not there. No. It's cards of sorrow, yes. cards and that's when you throw the cards. Yep. I have a collage. The first five times I went to Rocky, I have my ticket stub and one of the cards yeah. I pulled off the floor. I turned it into a little little collage thing. I you know when I was a kid, and I still have it. I was like, okay, that's like we need to be quirky. Let's do that. That's quirky. I'm like, going to smell my hand, or I'm going to put some again, cards in my pants. Again, they didn't know what they were doing. I know. They didn't know what they were doing. It's just like a big, you know, it's like they sat around at the story meeting and every idea was like, sure, sure, (laughs) sure. It's like, who ran that writer's room? That's what, well, actually, I'm guessing really there wasn't a writer's room because they used the original script. Yeah. So I guess it's more storyboarding. Yeah, I guess. And direction. Producers and stuff. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I thought was a complete misfire and a completely terrible choice. Yeah. Okay. In the film, Eddie comes out, does hot did, did you did you notice did you notice the reference to Bat Out of Hell? Bat out of hell. I don't know. How Eddie arrived? Oh yeah, through the window. Through yeah. the window. Yep. I was like, all right, bat out of hell. And, but that's not the only. That's not, okay, can, I know what you're talking yeah, about, and we'll right. get to that because we'll that it. was funny. I like yeah. that. That was that was like, thank you. Yeah. If you're going to adjust the script, make it even funnier. Right. That continue. What was absolutely wrong in in the film? Like we said, Hot Patootie, da da da. Frank comes out and kills Eddie. Right. Kills Eddie with a chainsaw. Right. Which is cartoony. Was it a chainsaw? Or was it an axe? I thought it was an axe. In the, that's right. You're right. In the movie, it's an axe. That's yeah. right. We did it with a chainsaw on the yeah. one time. It's an axe. Right. This was a knife. Just a little like poke, and, poke, 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 poke. But it was it was too real. It wasn't it wasn't absurd enough. Right. He it was just over stabbed him and then pushed him out the window. And, and then like, came up with the worst fucking line in movie history. What? Ladies and uh, Eddie has left the castle. Yeah. It was like what? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that is bad. That's bad. That's not, that's a murder. That's not a comedic, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I really hated that point. Part. And, and, you know, I, I didn't have as much a problem with it because I, I, I didn't see, he didn't come out of the freezer. So it's not like Frank is going to yeah. go th- back through the window and kill him. So it's like, well, he's going to have to die somehow. So let's see how they do it. But I would have been much fun. It would, I thought it would have been much funnier if he had threatened Eddie with a knife and pushed him out the window. Yeah, that would have been good. But just, you know, but they had to have the blood on the clothing and the, it oh. was just, it was just not good. It was yeah, not good. It was, uh, yeah, the it was... good thing that they did, yes. let's get to that during the dinner scene, Yes, they used one of the famous lines. It's a callback. It's a they callback. put the callback into the script. They had Columbia say, not meatloaf again. Boom. Yeah. That was great. Uh, that was great. I, I and, and it's one of the reasons why I love her. Yep, that and was that was absolutely I, great. I, I'm waiting for the Columbia show to come <laughs> next. Well, actually, didn't she... Um... Yeah, you know, she died. Yeah. That's right. She didn't make it out. It was uh, Brad Janet, uh, Dr. Scott. Yeah, she's the first one shot. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. By the uh, by, the Ronald Reagan. Yeah, blink uh, of the eye, a twitch of the lips, lips first one to scream, gets, gets it in the tits. The tits. <laughs> yep, yep. Now, speaking of alterations to the script, I noticed that all we wanted to do was use your telephone, God damn it, became all we wanted to do was use your telephone, damn, damn it. it. Yeah. I was like going... Really? Really? All right. Hey, you know. It's 2016, really? It's it's like, you know what? It's not like, oh, you've ruined it now because you didn't say God damn it. But Barton's like, but really? really? It's in the script. Why yeah. not just, it's like, we don't want to offend. Yeah. It's like, believe me, if you're a religious type that gets all bunged up about God damn it, <laughs> that, you're watching this. <laughs> this is the last thing. Who are like you? <laughs> because I want to I want to figure out what's going on in that's your That's the last straw. <laughs> it's like, are you one of the few people that actually watch what you're about to protest and talk shit about rather than just, you know, yeah. hear a synopsis and go, that offends me. Like. I don't know. Right. right. I wasn't a, wasn't a big fan of that. No. Um, what I wasn't kind of a fan of was the uh, Dr. Scott, Janet, Brad, Rocky. Oh, they kept that up and yep. they did it pretty much 
like the film. Yep. And I was like, all right. You know, they didn't try to fuck with it. They didn't try to improve on it. They just, yeah, they just did it, which was, uh, which was pretty good. Uh, another alteration in the script during uh, Planet Schmanet Janet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what would be really nice? What? A mental mind fuck. Yeah. Not a mental mind game. Yeah. A mental mind fuck. Now, it is broadcast and it is before 10 o'clock. I understand. Yeah. We still haven't, we can, we can, you know, I think um, fuck and uh, pardon me, everybody, cunt are the only two words that you don't hear even on the broadcast, right. you know, I mean, at the, uh, the cable networks, right, right. you know, asshole, shit, all the other stuff that used to be never, but the two, those two swear words are the ones we're like, yeah, we're drawing the line there. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. I understand, you know, if you know you're going to be playing a church, you alter your set list for the church. Yes, if you of know, course. If you know you're going to be on Fox on a Sunday night, or when was it? Was it Thursday night? When, what night was uh, it? When was it on? Yeah, it was on... No, Wednesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday night? Yeah, whenever that Whatever it was. was. Um, it was a weeknight. It was, no, no, it wasn't a weekend. No. Weeknight. Weeknight, yes, yeah. weeknight. Um, and you know you're going to be playing, you know, Fox doesn't run things after 10 o'clock because they do their local news. Right. So you know your time slot's going to be 8 to 10. I understand that. I understand that. It, it, it definitely was a big noticeable thing for me. But In, in the band, uh, in my band, the Dirt, the Dirt Poets, we do a uh, no-effects version of an Offspring song called Radio. And the, uh, we very often have to alter it because the... The core, the pre-chorus is uh, uh, here. I am. Turn it up. Uh, turn it up, fucking loud. And we can't do that in certain places. Uh, you know, like bars that have you know eighteen and under. So we change it. Where are these bars? Well, if they're non-smoking, you can have kids. You okay. know, well, re- bar restaurants. We play a lot of okay, bar but restaurants. restaurants. Restaurant bar, not bar bars. I was about to say bar restaurants. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know your audience. You know, know your audience. Mean. So I can, I can. Even I, if they just bleeped it, though, mental mind bleep would be nice. That's the only way they could get gotten away with it. Yeah. Have him, have have her actually say it. Yeah, but you know what? That would have been the only bleep in the entire. Well, there's no other way around it. They're not going to say it. Yeah. So changing it to mental mind game. Okay, that that's fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not such a peers like. No, you've tarnished. The, no, no, you know. but you know they could. That, that's one that was non negotiable. They had to change. It. Yeah, goddamn, you can get away because they say it. They say it in the eight o'clock hour all the time. No problem with that all the time. But like I said, you know the f word and the c word. The, that doesn't not that doesn't fly. Yep. So all right, fair enough. Yep. I am still waiting, and of course, you know this load has been shot now, and it will never happen. In our lifetime, well, maybe like forty years from now, but I want to see a production, preferably on stage, because we have it on film. It's the original. I want a stage production that does the seventies version. Yeah, the sleazy. This thing was so sanit. It it wasn't shooby doo doo wop like we were talking about. It it goes all over the place. I want the sleazy seventies stage version i wanted to get put back on broadway yeah and do it where it's like oh my god bowie could have played frank or just something that's just that just reeks of 70s excess and sleaze right and just you know that's what i want to see i would love to see that as a stage show yeah the last time they tried to put it up uh, on broadway was september of 2001 yikes and yeah so it's Opened and closed. Very, it was right around that time. It was like it opened like the first week of September, and no. then it closed like the third week of September. Yeah, it was good. Like I have the actual soundtrack for it, and it was it isn't what you wanted, but it's be, it's a little more it's rock. Closer. It's less fifties and a little more yeah seventies. And I'm not against the fifties. It's just that I saw what they did with the Rocky Horror Picture Show original film. And I want to see those arrangements done on stage. That's it. Yeah. That's just, you know, that's what I was I really. I think you could even go farther. Like, Oh, yeah, you could take, definitely. Take the piano out, not 100%, like, you know, you leave it for superheroes and stuff like that. But, I mean, yeah. like, the time warp, just, you know, it doesn't have to be based around piano. Just no. make it a fucking guitar yeah. song. Yeah, it basically turn it into a rock, yeah. you know, a, instead of a doo-wop version. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, another thing that, um, you know, as I, 
as I check you on message boards, because obviously people are going to have opinions. Oh, yeah. Ranging all the way through what we've been talking about to, I thought it was wonderful. And, you know, and you know what? If this is somebody's first exposure to Rocky and they look into it like, oh, there's another, maybe they'll go see a shadow cast or at the very least, maybe go rent the original film yeah. and see what came before. So that's why I got no problem with remakes. I was so, trying to explain to uh, a, a new friend of mine at work. He was, he, we were talking about it. Uh, he was like, yeah, that Rocky Horror thing's on tonight. I was like, yeah, have you ever seen it? He's like, no. I said, Wait. Wait, I was like, if, and if you're gonna see it, don't rent it because it won't make any sense. Go to the theater. Go to. Um, you know, go I would put a slight caveat on that okay. because, um, the last time I saw it in a theater was uh, in San in San Diego. A bunch of us Rocky vets went to go see what what the current kids are doing. Yeah, and it had gotten so. The audience participation got really fucking insane to where if you did not know what was going on already, you sure as hell ain't going to get it from anything audio wise coming out of the movie. Speakers. Oh, was it just constant? Yeah. Just line, 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 stepping on lines, you know, uh... at our theater, there was, you know, we actually ejected a couple of people during the run that would just not sh- and they just just yelling everything. Everyone kind of knew where the lines were to be and yeah. what they were with some variation because, you know, don't dream it, be it, be yourself. But then there were people that just, just like, what? I can yell in a movie theater? This is amazing. Yeah. I'm just going to, my verbal diarrhea has no cure. Blah, the whole movie. And as I'm sitting there watching it, I was thinking to myself going, wow, it's a good thing I know this film better than just about any film on the planet. Yeah. Uh, aside from Star Wars, um, <laughs> no, probably better than Star Wars. I've seen Rocky more than I've seen Star Wars. I haven't. <laughs> oh, really? I've seen Star Wars more than anything ever. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I've but seen that, Rocky a lot, but not, I mean, not close to Star two, Wars. Two shows every weekend for what? Age fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Five and a half years, yeah. just about. Well, I only did it for two because oh, okay. they because in uh, eighty nine. Tim Burton's Batman killed it because we had four theaters in our theater, like four screens in our theater. Yep. And that when Batman came out, it was on every screen yep. up until midnight and we were done. We never got, never came back. Damn. Yep. That's killed it. So if you have no experience with it, a case could be made either for going for your first time to a, um, a theater doing the film with a shadow cast. Right. But another could be made for watch it at home see what's going on and then get it in perspective at the theater. If I were to recommend like either option was available to somebody, I would say just go to the shadow cast first and then pick up and then watch it and then watch it at home to go, Oh, that's what happened there. Cause so many people were yelling and all I know for my thing, I did not know anything about Rocky. I hadn't heard any of the music. I didn't even know it was a thing yep. until my friend Renee, he took me to a performance and that was it. That was my that was my thing. Yep. Same here. And, and I, you know, we've talked about this before. No need yep. to go into it. But I mean, those people are more my family than most of my actual family. Yeah. yeah. And that's you know that's a thing that I treasure to this day and will until the day I die. Same here. Now back to the message boards. Apparently, some people had a problem with trying to make the cast racially diverse. And I'm thinking, okay, let's think about every role in Rocky Horror and which ones demand a certain uh, race. And there are none. none. Yes. Not one fucking one. Right. Brian and Janet don't even have to be the same race. No. It doesn't. So I'm, I'm just like, I understand that, okay, they happen to have a, you know, a white Frank and now we have a black Frank. I can understand you going, oh, I like the, you know, okay, but blame that it's a different actor, not because that right. actor is black or transgender or whatever the hell you're looking to pick. Um, I just don't get that. I don't even, I don't even think we need to dignify that. I mean, that's. Well, now there are some productions that I will not name because 
I work on them sometimes, where they have a large family and the parents are both of one race and the kids are mixed of all different races. And it's not explained if they're... A, and, <laughs> and part of me goes, all right, suspension of dif- disbelief. Yes, there's a magic thing that happens in the show or whatever it is that, yeah. like, you know, you suspend your disbelief about that, but not about, uh, you know, so... I guess that's where I could maybe pick like, all right, well make them all black or all white or all Latino. I, I don't, but see you know what? It's the, all. it's the theater. Yeah. And you know what? Eh, why, why pick to death on it? Yeah. The, the theater thing you're speaking of. Yeah. That doesn't bother me at all. I think eh. that's just that the, the, the movie thing. I just, I, it, it's, it's just very interesting. I mean, like it's, it's, yeah, it's 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 a thing, and, right? And you know and that's that's why you know like I can't believe that in Interstellar this happened. Like so, traveling in other dimensions and at light speed that you don't have any problem with that, but you have a problem with this nitpicky right. thing, right? Neil they're deGrasse aliens. Tyson. Yeah, they're aliens anyway. What does it matter? Yeah, you know? exactly. So what? Interstellar? Not Interstellar. Oh, no, no, you're no. talking about trans? Yeah, I'm talking about Rocky. Yeah, yeah Rocky. Yes. Yeah. I, again, I don't think we need to dignify that. No. Uh, That's so. just people. Uh, well, if you've looked at any message board of anything ever in the history, it's well, like, I, that really, should... you must be a person who really looks hard to find something oh, yeah. to be upset about. Yeah. Because this is not something to be upset about. No. Not, not at, all. at all. Not at all. So, what other thoughts do you have? Um, um the floor show was good, kind of. Yeah, I was. I was, was really okay. kind of bummed that they didn't spring for the fucking statues. Yeah, because as Frank is doing, as you know, even smiling makes my face ache. You can see Rocky's hand like yeah. wavering, like. So or at they're... least spring for the special effect, you know, just freeze for you know. Just... Well, it's not even a special effect. It's like and cut, put them in the space and cut, you know, or just was... blue screen, you know. Uh, I don't know. It just, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It was... I'm not, yeah, but you know what? It's a, it's a choice. Yep. And that's what they do in the stage play. It's not like they say, "All right, audience, curtain close, curtain open." Oh, look, there's a statue. So maybe Kenny Ortega was going. We're gonna we're gonna in this one scene as opposed to every scene we're gonna adhere more to the stage play yeah where, where they have to freeze on stage again like okay that's um yeah that's fine I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know so many so many issues well this is so tied up in my formative years of oh, my absolutely. childhood we know it it has so access fun. like if they. You know, for some people, if they remade the Goonies or, you know, yeah. and there are some films that they remake, I'm going, I don't really give a crap one way or the other because I have no emotional connection to that. This is way different. This is, oh, this us. is, yeah. The only, the only film they could remake that has more of an emotional connection for both of us, like, hey, we're going to remake Star Wars. Like, no! Yeah. No. 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 Speaking of which, what? Childish Gambino. That's a whole other podcast right there. I mean, oh hell yeah! I mean, we and we called it. We said, you know, wouldn't that be the perfect? Wouldn't casting? that be perfect cast? And it's almost like, yes, we're gonna listen to the nerds. Well, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Not to go off on this tangent, but um, Lord and Miller, who are directing the Han Solo movie, yeah. um, they are huge Community fans. Ah. They uh, both. Danny Pudi and uh, I believe I think they directed like some community episodes. Really? I think yeah. that's where they started. Right. And Danny Pudi is in uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier that they he directed. Is. I think Donald Glover is, but I'm not sure. But I know they were mm. like connected, so it, it wasn't so far out of the realm. I I posted this on Facebook, and I will state it here for the record. I think that Donald Glover, either as part of an actual campaign. Or a one-off is a joke for like college humor or funny or die. Uh-huh. Needs to do a Colt forty-five commercial. Oh yeah, fuck oh, yes, yeah. he needs to, and he needs to do it maybe with the actual you know Landau. Yeah, with with Billy. Yeah, with Billy D. Yeah. Land- Lando. 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 Lando Calrissian. Landau. Landau. Martin Landau. Martin that would Landau. be a weird. Martin that would Landau be a weird Calrissian. Ad campaign. <laughs> wow. Space 1999, 1999 made <laughs> Star go. Wars. That's a mashup nobody wants nobody to see. Nobody wants to see. It's like you're trying to get back to Earth. Um, the moon is traveling through space. You know what? how fucked up the Earth is right now without the moon? You don't want to go back there. Right. 
Meet the cool alien chicks that do groovy things, but without green skin. Right. But now I want to see. Now I want to see uh, Han and Lando. Like that's the movie I want to see. I, I you know. I, I I want it to be a good, lighthearted, fun with some serious moments buddy film, but not Lethal Weapon in space. No. Fuck that. No. 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 I don't want to see that. No. He needs. It needs to be the 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 Sabak game where he loses the fog into to Han. Oh, we got to have that. Has have, to be. We that's, have to. That's one of the main points that reasons to do it. Well, because hey, or even better, he even better like have him like already being mad about like have it not happen have it have happened ah. previously and already he's mad about it so when you see him later on he's still mad <laughs> so at the end of empire when he suddenly you think he's wearing han's clothes like no those are my clothes yeah. damn it they're <laughs> in the locker and he never cleared them out for when it was my goddamn ship so uh, but anyway we are way, way off topic for me yeah. i mean you know transylvania is uh, is a long time ago in a galaxy far away but not that That's far more away. than 12 parsecs more yeah <laughs> more than it's a measurement of no. Forget it. No. We're not going to go there. Uh, any other closing thoughts on uh, again? On I, yeah, you 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 nailed it when you said uh, having Tim Curry sing part of the oh, was, at the end was wonderful. I was just like, and it was so Curry. Yeah, I just yeah, that was good. And, and God bless him. I mean, you know, just good on him, man. Have, and, I mean, basically, he'd be a legend if he had just stopped after. Oh yeah, Rocky. But he's got he's got Clue, and he's got oh. He also has that unfortunate reboot of Family Affair where he played Mister French. <laughs> right. But we're not gonna talk about that. What was that? Uh, there's a great. I forget which bad parody movie it was, and he was uh, playing a bad guy, and uh, 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 it just wilderness girls. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh that? yes. That's like one of the lethal. Yeah, it was one of the le- not, not lethal. What was it? What are the with the Charlie Sheen? Oh, the yeah, Hot Shots or one of those yeah, type of movies. Yeah, or, or one of yeah. I, I wilderness. thought it was wilderness girls. Um, I thought it was a really awful, stupid, goddamn, terrible place to put a fucking commercial break in between. Rose Tint and Wild Not Dame thing. Yeah, that is just like wow. You're it, the whole number is a build up. It's a it's a no, it's a number. <laughs> That's true. It's right. It's like trying to listen to um um you know um uh was it Black Dog and without listening to um, oh Live and, Live and Love and Made Live yeah. and Love and Made afterward. You're like Ugh, they do that on the radio yeah, or sometimes. We Will Rock You and We're the Champions. Exactly. You, you, like why are you it's cutting one this? song? Yeah, you can't. It's, it's like. Dark Side of the Moon. If if you're playing Money, you can get away with playing just that. Yeah. But if you're playing, you got just stop. Just do do right. the sweet. So you can't. Yeah, you can't. That's the end of the film. That's the end of the show. You can't yeah. just cut right in the middle. It, it was of interesting it. how the um, how the um, physio molecular transport device, yep. um, which kills you and also transports you. Yeah. Okay, we'll get into that. Never. Um, they made this one to look kind of like a uh, guitar a little bit. Yeah. Kind of guitarish, not yep. super guitarish, but, you know, and Riff was playing guitar during the Time War. Which was odd, but interesting. And, you know, well, hey, a live band was there for pretty much the whole thing. Yep. Like, also odd. Okay. Interesting well, choice. Why not do it live like Grease? And, of course, it would have definitely limited some of the... Yeah, you couldn't do what some of the stuff. Well, they could have done it. It's just they couldn't have done it that way. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, Grease, they did Grease live. and for, They're doing Hairspray uh, next. Is that, soon they're going to run out of iconic musicals right. to do live. The casting for that is way better. It's actually going to be Harvey Firestein is playing Edna in Hairspray. Oh, well, fuck yeah. Yeah, yep. And uh, uh, again, they got a new Yeah, they but they're not going to go back and get John Travolta? Yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. And uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, is it Michelle Pfeiffer or was that the movie? No, it's Kristen Chenoweth is playing Velma and uh, Dove Cameron from Disney Channel. She's playing her daughter, and that's good. And they got a, they got a newcomer playing um, playing uh, Tracy, so it's going to be good. I think yeah. that's a better thing than some of the awful like. Let's see the the bit. Well, they're doing that's right. They're doing they're doing the musical, not the film. Right for me, the film of Hairspray. Uh, it has a Rocky connection. Do you know what it is? The no. the original film or the original the, the, the original the John, John Waters? Waters? Yeah. No, no, I don't. You, you don't. You wouldn't because at our theater, they ran the trailer, an extended trailer for Hairspray before jumping directly into it. 
into Rocky. Really? Yeah. And this extended trailer had almost the complete Madison number in it. And we all learned, learned the, the Madison. Madison. All the cast members were up there and we're like, we learned it, man. We learned the Madison just from <laughs> just from that trailer. To this day, I'm like going, okay. I do and, the Madison myself. Yeah. Uh, I, do, I do the rock myself. Well, I do the swim. Another callback from yep. the Little Nelson. Yeah, that's the other thing. There was just all the callbacks came back. Yeah. Oh, they're like buried in me. Yep, we were that we were doing some callbacks during this, you know, this broadcast, and we stopped after a while because <laughs> it was like, eh. well, it's, it's like some of the actors are like, I'm going to make sure people can do callbacks, and others are like, nope, no callbacks for you. I'm yeah. going to close up all the open spaces and make it very difficult for you to do your callbacks. Yep. And you know what? Fine, you're not trying to do a shot for shot remake. Except when you are. Eh. Yeah. Uh, Until ori- you're not. Of the original film. <laughs> you know, it's it's the same danger of going to see a live show. Like, you know, we encourage callbacks. Like, well, we don't know how you're going to phrase it. So we yeah. could start talking and then you start talking and then we're the assholes. Right. So um, all in all, eh, C minus for me. Yeah, eh, about that. With uh, yeah, mid C, C ish. A um, couple little bright spots. Columbia. But... Oh yeah, little little fun bits. Little uh, oh hell with Tim in Columbia. Hell, let's round that up to a C plus. Why not? Yeah, yeah, it's about right. It's uh, just you know, sorry Laverne. I mean, very brave. Just you were all over the place. Your your Tina Turner doing Roast in My World was was epic. Yeah, I mean, you know, I thought I had seen. You know, I'd seen Tim and Charles Nelson Riley and all the other stuff. Yeah, we doing, doing the whole uh, the Proud stuff. Mary. Oh, exactly. It was great. Do, 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 do. It was Am great. I going? Okay. And coming down on the King Kong, you know, the Fay Ray. Yeah, and that was pretty neat. That so. was interesting. So and of course, its... the the entrance for Sweet Tea was like, and I'm on a platform being lowered, and I'm thinking that was what that is what you would do for a live stage show. Yeah, you're taping this. Yeah, you're gonna have an actual this. elevator. You can do an elevator. You could do something else, um, but hey, you know, I mean, everyone's creative choices are not the ones necessarily that I would made. But uh, when someone says, Michael, raise your hand uh, if you've directed a film version of Rocky <laughs> Horror, and my hand will stay firmly at my side. Yep. So, so take a stab at what the budget was for this production. Oh, geez, I don't even know. Give me, I mean, you, you you know how film budgets go. Obviously, this is television. Probably but... 25 times more than the original movie. Well, just inflation would have done that. Right. But I mean, I don't have any idea. Uh, $20 million. That seems about right. Yeah. And if and if $5 million each was given to Tim and Columbia, I'm good with that. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. <laughs> but that's, you know, well, and Lever, I mean, you know... Uh, I like Laverne Cox. Yeah. I mean, I've seen her in um, uh, Orange is the New Black. Yep. And phenomenal. Yep. I mean, she is a great fucking actress. And she can sing and dance, too. It's yeah. just that performance. And, you know, maybe it's maybe it's her. Maybe it's her direct, her being directed by Kenny Ortega. I've never seen any of the High School Musical films. or t- Was it a TV show? Or f- it was their film. Well, they're, they're TV movies. TV movies. Yeah. And I know it was a big phenomenon and, and good if it gets another generation of kids into musicals. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, but, you know, God, if only Bob Fosse was still alive. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every musical ever from now until eternity would be better if just Bob Fosse just choreographed it. Just choreographed it. He doesn't have to direct. Right. He's going to want to direct. Oh, yeah. But. If he just, you know, or even if one of his uh, his students and ranking isn't uh, isn't dancing anymore on Broadway, but she could still choreograph. Oh, yeah, totally. His daughter is still, you know, Nicole is still around. Just just come on. More Fosse and everything. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah. Twenty million. Guess what the viewership was? Not that much. I'm sure. About four million and some change. Huge flop when you can com- uh, compare it to Greece, which I think was in the high teens. Yeah, it just didn't. Uh, it didn't get 
initial viewership. Now, of course, the numbers may come in later for DVR. Because, I mean, I, I DVR'd it when it oh, was so, on. Because yeah. I think, where was I? I was doing something else. Yeah, we didn't watch it until yeah. uh, Saturday I got so much night. stuff. It's weird. It's like I'm booked solid during the week. But on the weekends, I'm suddenly, I, like, I have time to do things. Yeah. And I finally watched it, uh, I think, Saturday afternoon or something Yeah, we like watched that. it Saturday night. So, and I know that, you know, Big Brother's watching us, and they know that we're watching a program that was DVR'd on Thursday on Saturday yeah. because they're able to figure that out. Yeah, they the final ratings don't come out for like a week Right, exactly. Or so. It's like the snap it's like the snap ratings yeah. and then the returns come in. You yeah, know, with, so with it'll DVRs. probably round out about six, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So, you know, I still have it on my D V R in case we wanted to, you know, review something, but yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I watched it. I have no problems having watched it. I don't think it was two hours wasted. If for no other reason, like I said, for Tim Curry and uh, and Columbia. Yep. And to see what someone else would do with it. Now, guess who guess who has been incredibly hands off on uh on this movie? O'Brien, probably. I'm completely hands yeah. off. He he doesn't want to slag it off, but he says I I have no participation or connection in this whatsoever. Yeah. And he doesn't have the film rights. He still has the production rights. Yeah. You know, for stage plays. So when, I don't know if it's through uh, Samuel French or whoever, but when you go to do the rights, you, you know, Richard yeah. O'Brien gets paid. And he gets paid for this as well, but he doesn't have creative control. Yeah. Now that's why certain people, like, let's say, for instance, the Chapman brothers who do Homestar Runner, they got offers out the ass to do stuff for cartoons and marketing and promotion and films, TV, does everything. But they'd have to give up their creative control and their ownership to get that. And they and good for them. They said, No. Yeah. We these are these characters are part of us. We're not giving that up. And so Richard O'Brien gave up for film. And television, obviously, right. but but not for the actual stage production. But he's been very reticent to talk much about it, other than just to say, yeah, I'm, I'm not involved. And he's only 72, 73, you know, and it's old-ish. I mean, let's face it, he looked... But he's still working. I mean, he's, he's, oh, he's doing a lot of voiceover. He's voice, tons and yeah. tons of voice work. And, and he would have been a great criminologist in this as well. Yeah, absolutely. Know? I mean, let's face it. I mean, we could have uh, we could have crammed in, you know, Everybody. half the original cast if yeah. we wanted to, if for no other, just make him a Transylvania or whatever. Yeah. But, but you know, at a certain point, you're like one or two cameos is enough. If you bring back the entire cast, <coughs> Ghostbusters, and bring them in, not nah, it was okay. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I liked it. it was, you know, hey Kate, let's put it this way: Kate McKinnon is my god. I just I. Love everything she does. Yeah. Everything she does. Yep. But yeah, you don't have to bring back every original cast member. Right. It's nice to have one or two little, you know, it's nice to see Han Leia and eventually Lee, <laughs> you know, at the end. It's mm-hmm. like, he's at one with a force. He knew she was coming. He could have been down, you know, down at the base when they landed. Like, no, nope, I'm going to make her walk her ass all <laughs> the way up top, look around, go to the very edge of the cliff. Oh, there I'll be. Yeah. So I can have a dramatic turnaround. Like, you didn't know she was coming. And take my hood off for three minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, and that was a big-ass paycheck for me. Well, apparently he's going to be more prominent. Oh, yeah, it's and, his movie. Yeah. yeah so, But not that we're going to bring everything back to... Star Wars. To Star yeah. Wars, although everything does somehow relate in some way yep. to, to Star Wars. Now, are you aware uh, that there is an actual sequel to Rocky? Not shock treatment. I know there was a script, yes. Right. Revenge of the Old Queen. Yes. Apparently, uh, uh, Frankenfurter's mother is uh, wondering where her baby is uh. and decides to come back to Earth to figure things out. Mm-hmm. Um I've read the script. Yep. And it is fucking awful. <laughs> I mean, dreadful beyond comprehension. Uh-huh. Now, it also includes the lyrics to the songs. Okay. Which are pretty fucking clever. Okay. Pretty good. Yep. Um, much like shock treatment in the sense that some people go, 
what the fuck is this film even about? Uh-huh. I mean, I, I I figured it out, and it's okay. But the songs are pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, it's possible that, you know, Revenge of the Old Queen can still be filmed. Really? Because, well, you really would want to bring back some of the, you know, some of the original actors for it. I right. mean, Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn are, are, are very instrumental in in Revenge of the Old Queen. Yep. S- but um, we don't have Charles Gray with us anymore. No. And uh, I don't, Rocky doesn't even figure in that script. No, not at all. And, you know, thank God, because he's, you know, he wasn't an actor then and he still isn't an actor. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, to replace Charles Gray as the uh, as the criminologist. Yeah. Uh, now, we, we're not going to get Tim Curry in that because that would be too close, you yeah. know, and it just wouldn't work anyway. I propose that if they do make Revenge of the Old Queen, we bring in... Medication time. Medication time. Oh, we ran out of time. I will tell you next week. The Nine Billion Names of Pod was conceived, written, and performed by Michael Reed and Dan Bauman. The Fabulous Benny Hassan as the sound of splintering wood. Research, transportation, and exasperating looks by Courtney Lorden. Technical assistance by Cubase, Pro Tools, Skynet, QLab, Zthot, Big Brother, and Eddie or Shipboard Computer. Financial consideration provided by the Wayne Foundation, Stark Industries, the Brown Brothers, and LexCorp. Legal counsel by the Office of Howard Howard and Fine. Patient. Our intro music was written by Tim Akers. This podcast was sponsored by Deep Track Records and is a production of Audio Primate. Throw us a couple stars on iTunes, why don't you? Check us out on dazgaragradio.net. Listen, watch on YouTube. Listen on SoundCloud. Stream us on Stitcher. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or email us. Comlink at billionpod.com. Until this happens again, I'm Dan Bauman. I'm Michael Reed. Hello, Z. (laughs) Audio Primate.